Traditional real estate agents are busy people. They're constantly managing properties, paperwork, and those darn personalities that make the real estate world run. And yet, to be a successful real estate agent or investor or broker, you need to be adept at navigating all this volume of both quantitative and qualitative information and make sure that not one ball is dropped. When we're competing against the pressure of wanting to take on more and more transactions to increase that salary, assuming our transactions are around the same size for each of them, this is a tough spot to be in. And recently Juan commented on one of my past videos about process building this comment here, basically asking if we can use anything from the process and systems toolbox to make the life of real estate agent a little bit easier. In this video, I'm going to be rising to that challenge, Juan. I hope I get close and I'm going to be sharing some process and project management skills that are super easy step by step that anyone in the real estate profession, whether you're a real estate agent, a broker, whatever your role is, these are some some practices you can take to help systemize your delivery of whatever your service is. While there are going to be timestamps below this video to help you skip around, don't miss a second because I will be sprinkling in some pro tips along the way that you won't want to miss out on. For our first tip, our first hack thing when it comes to making your real estate agent workflow a little bit more systemized. Well, kind of the given when you're on a process driven YouTube channel, right? Define a process. That's our first step. So what I want you to do here is to think about how you typically serve your real estate agent clients. So whether you're working with buyers, sellers, commercial, residential, something in between, mixed use, I don't know what your situation is, but think about what a normal transaction flow is. If you're working inside a brokerage, they may provide some of this guidance for you, but I wouldn't take it as gospel. Think about your own preferences, your own favorite client and how exactly you worked with them and record that as a process. When I've worked with real estate agents in the past on process mapping, we took the basic framework you've seen me describe up in this video here. We basically asked ourselves, all right, up at the very top of a piece of paper, what happens when someone becomes your client? Do they sign a contract? For most agents, that's usually not the start. It's usually a, a conversation pre-contract. But whenever you consider someone a client, write that up at the top of your page. Then at the bottom of the page, write when someone finishes being your client. What is the moment? Is it closing? Is it 30 days after closing when you send your final follow-up? Is it when they finally, I don't know, Airbnb out their property? I don't know what your policies are, but we want the start and the stop. From there, go to the very top of your page and start asking yourself, what happens next? Those are the magic three questions that will guide you through uh, filling in the blank, basically, of how you get from the start to the stop. So for example, if someone starts being your real estate agent client, when they start, uh, they DM you on Instagram, most of the time, let's say, and they say, hey, I want you to be my agent, Jill, you're amazing. Awesome. So Jill becomes my agent, then what happens? Well, Jill might have a call with me to figure out what exactly I'm looking for. Am I buying, selling, commercial, residential? What is it? After that, maybe there's uh, an intake form of some kind where Jill's asking questions to make sure she can fill in the information she needs for her CRM and for the MLS uh, automated listing she needs to create. From there, there might be a step of creating those automated MLS listings, a step of following up with the new client, letting them know what's happening. There might be another step of meeting up once a week to go to open houses every Saturday. I don't know what your process is here, but write out each of those steps, include every email, every phone call, every task you need to do from start to stop for any new client. Once you have this process defined, you can use this in every touch point with your customer to make them uh, feel comfortable with what's happening next. I think there's a quote that I, I credit back to this video here where Joey Coleman is saying how uh, to never lose a customer again, you wanna make sure you're telling your customer in every interaction what you're doing and what they're doing up next so they can feel in control. Let's practice that in real estate, guys. If you are meeting with them to kind of assess what price they should be listing their home for, end that conversation by saying, okay, I'm going to now use all this information to create an amazing listing that's going to sell your house as quickly as we can for top dollar. Your tasks for this next phase are to sit back and relax. There's no action I need from you at this time. Or maybe there are actions, but always covering what you are going to do and what they're going to do is a nice way to make your process a little bit more high touch. And that's just part of your day-to-day -day verbal conversations or 
emailed conversations. If you're thinking, oh, that sounds great, I'd love to do that, but I always forget to tell people this when I send off those emails or shoot a quick text, you might wanna check out the sponsor of today's video. I'm gonna jump in with a quick word of the sponsor of today's video, Text Expander. If you find yourself retyping information or having templates across a ton of different software that you use, you might wanna check out Text Expander both for yourself and for your team. For example, here I've defined an example email to kick off a client engagement inside my Text Expander account. I've defined very variables that are fill in the blank here, drop down fields, and even optional sections that I include or not include based on my preferences. This is like a super size template creation thing, and it follows me everywhere. Whether I'm inside my work management software or inside my email, or just in a notepad, if I type the command, in this case, example, right here, you can see that defined. If I hit a spacebar after this, bam, a pop-up appears prompting me to fill in the customized information, in this case, John Doe's name, which service it is, and whether or not I want to add that reminder. And then we'll have that added right into my email or notepad or wherever else I'm normally typing. Whether you're working by yourself or with a team, standardizing this kind of communication can be a huge time saver to ensure you're not constantly checking for typos or repeating yourself. And of course, this is really just the beginning. If you wanna spend less time typing and more time actually getting things done, check out the link in the description below for more information about Text Expander. With that, back to the video. All right, so the second tip I have for how to systemize that real estate agent workflow would be to reuse your work. Basically, we wanna explore different ways to turn our time expenses, the things we're spending time on, and turn them into time investments. If I could make some kind of stretch of a real estate analogy here, we want to make sure we're paying the principal and not the interest. A bit of a reach of a metaphor there. But let's just imagine we are in a situation where a client is a first time home buyer. I'm using that just because it's an easy example. They have never bought a house before. They're completely new. They're asking you so many questions, blowing up your phone. And you're like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> first time home buyers, let's do this. You have two choices. You could go ahead and write detailed text messages back to this customer. You could have more meetings with them. You could guide them through everything they need to know about buying a home for the first time. Doing so would be a one-time spend of your time that you're not gonna get back, and that customer would be delighted. Or, or you could do option two. Option two would be the same situation, but rather than that customer blowing up your phone and you giving them as much information as you can as they ask it, option two would be you choosing to invest your time in a reusable resource that's unique to you. In this example, you wanna take every question that new first time home buyer is gonna ask you. Things like, what kind of loan should I have? What my budget should be? How do I figure out what I can afford? Whatever those questions are. And put them in a document, word for word. Use their words as much as you can, but try to make them coherent thoughts. And then write out answers. Same amount of work as texting that person back, but you're gonna put this in something like a PDF or a website page or a blog post. And then, you are gonna send this published resource to your client. You made it just for them, but it's now published so you can reuse it hundreds of times to come. This first time home buyer's guide built by Jill's Real Estate is something you could then reuse for every new first time home buyer you're working with as an additional value add. It's actually one of the examples I talk about up in this video about using process to actually raise your prices or to deliver a more premium experience. Beyond the first time home buyer's example, you could also create reusable resources like what to expect when you list with me, FAQ articles like this to help people understand your value add. The creation of these reusable resources, even if they're just shared amongst your current and future clients, is an investment because you're spending the time once and getting value, generating value, delivering value from these resources every single time they're used. In fact, that's actually how this YouTube channel started, in case you didn't know. I started creating YouTube tutorials for my clients, unlisted, just published them up here because I thought it would be faster and uh, an easier way to get file hosting. And look what happened. It does not only help my clients on a reusable basis, but has now become a marketing channel for us, which is a little bonus nugget. And actually, we could just call that a secondary pro tip for this video. If you do this well enough of investing your time, not only can it help with fulfillment, making it go smoother, save you time in that journey, but also recycle the content. It can become marketing to help you differentiate yourself and add value to your existing audience, whether that's just the people in your neighborhood, your networking group friends, whomever, 
by having these resources, you're positioning yourself in a positive way and also teasing what it's like to actually work with you. Now for our third and final way to inject some process goodness into your real estate agent workflow, um, I'm just going to call this process your mistakes because I'm not really sure what else to call it. Basically, remember in step one where we created that process chart and we were like, here's our, our map of what's happening. This is our process map, how to go from becoming a client to leaving as a client. Remember that? Yeah. Well, when I use this exercise with clients or on workshops, you know, I've, I've done that same model with thousands of people now and 90 some percent of them do that and they're like, wow, I'm learning something. This, this helps me understand what all I need to do. And then they never touch it again. Boggles them to me. For this final step, I want you to be the 10% that doesn't do that. Look at that piece of paper and the next time you make a mistake or you learn something new, go back to that piece of paper. That's it. I'm going to give you three examples, in fact, of how to do this, because I feel like it's just a skill of process improvement that folks just aren't practicing for some silly reason. Example number one is let's say you're in a real estate investor meetup. Maybe you are a, a commercial focused real estate agent. You're always networking with investors. You love that demographic and you hear some other agent in that networking group say how they have had so much luck abandoning the whole concept of pop buys and replacing them with video messages using a software like Dub. And if you guys don't know about that, we'll have the link in the description below. And this Dub tool, they say, is just such a great way for them to stay engaged with their customers in a more modern and scalable format. Well, if you hear this information and it's something that agrees with your view of how you want your business to run, you should go back to that process map and look for any time you have pop buys in your sales or fulfillment process. Replace one. Instead of doing pop buys three times, so it's like pop pie, but pop buys three times a year, maybe you only do it twice a year and once a year you send a video instead and watch the results. That would be one way to take something that you've learned or seen or observed, not just consuming it, but actually practicing it. Same thing goes for YouTube for that matter. Let's just say you're watching a YouTube video like this one and you hear some weird person with too many cowlicks on YouTube say that you should be telling your customers what is going to happen next at every touch point. I can think of maybe one time recently you've heard that. Well, if you want to practice that and implement that into your process, go back to step one, that first piece and add a step that says at the end of this meeting, tell them what happens next, send an email and tell them what happens next, send them a text of what happens next, add steps that prompt you to do this action into your actual process. In fact, one great way to do that would actually be to use the software that's the sponsor of today's video, Text Expander. Text Expander is fabulous to make sure that you never forget these pieces because you could actually have it prompt you to add them anytime you use a snippet. It's why I like the tool so much. So if you haven't checked it out, again, description below for that link. That would be yet another way that you could practice the mistake or the gap that you identified and actually fix it moving forward. Let's just say that you just finished a particular transaction that was a nightmare. I think we've all had a nightmare client in our time. And you know, that was just the hardest seller you've ever worked with. Everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. But the thing that really screwed you over is the loan officer. They went out on vacation for weeks, didn't tell you, and things were just held up. Well, from that experience, I want you to reflect and think, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen again? Could we have a step back in our process to check in with the loan officer if we don't hear back within 48 hours? Could we have a step in our process where you call up the loan officer before you refer them out just to make sure they're actually gonna be able to give the quality of service that your client deserves? These are all different ways that you could go back to that first step and build your process so that it's bulletproof and that it can actually handle any kind of curveballs life throws at it. Because if our process is good enough, we shouldn't have many or hopefully any moments where we're derailed. We've built such a solid proactive process that we know that if someone's going to work with us, we're going to make sure their house gets sold quickly, efficiently, and with no hiccups along the way. Anything that comes up, we're going to take care of it because we have a process and we know what needs to happen. Speaking of which, actually, that brings me to my third and final pro tip of this video. When it comes to project management in general, even if the ball is not in your court, if you are working as the project manager and as a real estate agent, you are indeed coordinating this transaction. It is always going to be the ball in your court. Even if it's not, it is because ultimately you are the one the client is looking at. 
Whether your loan officer is out on vacation or your inspector is not answering the phone or the person who's supposed to be scoping out the property during due diligence just can't make it or got the wrong address, whatever comes up as the project coordinator, when the ball is in someone else's court, meaning you're asking them to do something, you still need to watch that ball. <laughs> make sure they kick it back, all right? Follow up, ping, be prepared. That's the project management skill that I think real estate agents are naturally gonna be quite good at, but so many folks don't realize that's part of the job description. Whether you're an agent, an investor, a broker, whatever other title you have, if you are coordinating a portion of the process, that responsibility and stewardship relies on you chasing that ball and making sure you're not just leaving it in the client's court and waiting for them to call you back. No, anything you're giving out to somebody else should have a reminder on your end to follow up if they don't get back to you in a certain number of days. So back to Juan's original question, when you're going to automate a real estate workflow, the first steps are what you see in this video. Once you've defined a rock solid process and have a process for improving the process, that makes sense, you can start looking at opportunities to take segments of that journey and put them on autopilot. Have a technology do them for you. But you can't do any of that until this step has been so, so, so optimized. The last thing we wanna do is automate a crappy process and have more junk happen faster. So we wanna get a solid process, do it manually a dozen times, a hundred times, getting it 1% better each time. And once it is there, start automating those steps that are wasting your time. And for more about automations, check out some of the videos on this channel. If this topic is interesting to you, if you'd like to see more on this, please do write part two in the comments below to let me know that you'd like to see a part two about how to automate this workflow that we talked about here. And if you'd like to go further into this kind of process method of thinking, check out the description of this video. Not only does it have all the links I've mentioned today, but it also has the link to our process-driven membership, which is how I actually work with clients on documenting what their business does and actually systemizing it within their work management software. That was a weird way to say management, but check that out if you're interested. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, enjoy the process.